do Star Wars this time. Um, uh, just a little background. Me and Gabe are really, really big Star Wars fans. Probably not as much as... Wait, one second. Let me ask you something. Are you like a big Star Wars fan? I'm, I'm like... I, I, I'd say I'm, I'm a good Star Wars fan. Okay, so I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not like a super geek. I would say I. I really, really. But like you. It. But you. So, but yeah. you've seen the movies and you know more or less what they're about. And oh yeah, 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 okay. yeah. I know. I don't so, know what I'm um, so um, just give me a few seconds. Okay. So, so right now we're gonna top this off with our third and final section in our sort of three part series of talking. We're gonna start talking about the Star Wars universe. So um, me and Gabe are both big fans. We wouldn't say we're super fans, but we do know enough to talk about it, speak about it, and sort of relive the nostalgia of seeing um, the, the original trilogy um, with, with our families. So um, here I'm going to hand it over to Gabe to speak a little bit and give us a little bit of introduction. Well, uh, wait, what do you want me to say? Just what... Uh, um, uh, um, what are what are you some of your here? Let me let me ask you actually the question that I've pulled up here. Um, okay. How and this we're just gonna dive right in here, guys, to looking at the franchise as a whole. How well do you think the newer movies do at capturing the sort of essence and nostalgia of the old ones? How do you think they did handling the sort of old characters and the old storylines? Um, can you speak a little bit on that? Oh, you're oh you're asking me this. Okay, my bad. Um, um, I would say I would say that I feel like they've it it varies by the movie. Okay. I think. I mean, say say for say for um, you know, like I'll let's begin start, with, um, with with the, episode start, seven. Ooh. Yeah, start with the Force Awakens, and let's yeah, we'll start with the Force Awakens, and then we'll go to Rise of Skywalker. Yeah. Um, the Force Awakens. The Force Awakens is like it's. I think we've all accepted that it's it's literally like it's almost a copy paste of A New Hope. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I think that was done in, and it was done intentionally. It's yeah. literally just a love letter. It's like it's a love letter to the to the um, to the original. It's a love letter, yeah. pretty much. Just just like just repeating it. You know, with the Empire as the First Order, the Resistance as the Rebel Alliance. It's just, and, it's just, yeah. it's a, it's a clean, it's a clean story. It's easy to enjoy, easy to introduce to a new generation of fans. And I mean, I think it did that job very well. And naturally I can see people got upset about that. It was pretty much just a copy about it. I mean, yeah, yeah, it was but, a copy, but I feel like that, I mean, I feel like they knew to a certain extent that they were, that they were going for something very similar to a new hope because what they were doing in this movie, I found a lot, was setting up things to pay off in the next two movies. I mean, exactly. I feel like I feel like if we go back to 2014 and just disregard, or whenever it came out, 2015, 2015. and we go back and just disregard the two movies that have come out since, um, that we realize that it's actually a pretty good movie. And it, it could be a pretty good first movie in a trilogy of. Like movies that get gradually better and better. Oh yeah, it's a great. Like it's it, a great. It sets setup. great foundations. It gets sets great storylines, great planets. I felt like it was the best that they dealed with Ray out of all of the three. I feel like it was the best way that they dealed with Finn because the, the stormtrooper thing, where they just disregarded that for the rest of the two films. I just felt that everything was, was big, handled the best. That was a big mistake, but I mean, we'll talk about that another time. They really screwed. Up. I, I, I mean, in my in my opinion, I think Finn's character was one of the best and most groundbreaking parts of the Force Awakens. Being the stormtrooper, who doesn't want to be one anymore, and sort of yeah, like the out. stormtrooper defector who who learns to fight for the right side. And you know what they did much. with him? You know what they did with him in the other two movies? They put him on side quests and made him comedic relief, and I and made made him comedic relief. And I feel mm-hmm. if they had focused on, because I mean, th- think about this. An African American stormtrooper, like rising, like in high ranks, decides to leave that all behind and fight the life he once knew. I mean, on paper, it's sort of a kind of you can see the cliche, but that could have been done so much better. Like that storyline seems a lot more compelling than the storylines that we got for some of the other characters, and they had the foundation, they had all the pieces there to work with to work with Finn's character, and they just didn't capitalize. Oh, he had an excellent. I think, I think the I, yeah, exactly. The idea of a 
stormtrooper, one of the people on, on, excuse me, on the side that's pretty much just like, this is like the iconic evil, Mm -hmm. like the iconic evil saying, hey, I don't want to do this. I I, realize. I can't stand by this anymore. I need out. Like that, that whole sequence when his friend, when his comrade, like, puts blood streaks on his helmet and that whole part where he's like he's the center of focus and all this chaos is going on around him that sequence was incredible in building his character that was an incredible opening and that's where the force awakens is goes right because they they do all this character building and world building and while it's not the most coherent movie they build the foundations for a really good star wars trilogy Exactly. Like, I mean, then that, and that whole, I mean, as, as, as I've said before, that whole concept of the villain who doesn't want to be a villain anymore and wants to fight for the right side makes him, makes that character so compelling. And the way that he has worked in Last Jedi is sort of, it, it continues that and almost has a strong final act for the character, but then it's sidelined. And then in Rise of Skywalker, he's just completely... You no, know, in Rise of bleh. Skywalker, you can, you can take out Finn and insert any other sort of he's com- generic he's general com- on the mission, and it's just, it's the same movie. It's just, there's nothing he's completely, there. He's completely kicked to the curb in that, in that movie. But, um, but I mean, in... I mean, that whole concept of him learning how to fight for the right side and being the ambitious one that wants to save, that has something to live for, like he likes, he's chasing after Rey, he wants to protect her, he wants to, he met, he met Finn, got along, I mean, no, he met, he met, he met Poe Dameron, god damn it, I called him Finn, um, (laughs) Yeah. I call like meeting him. Their interactions really I, I like. Loved, I love that relationship in the first. In the that first, whole in the play, first movie. Whole part, I love that. That whole part where they play off of one another is really something. That's one of really the best parts of the new franchise is Poe and Finn's dynamic. I feel. Mm-hmm. And and with um and in episode eight, mm-hmm. I don't think should have. To to me, I don't think he should have been put on. I think. In some instances, I think he should have been swapped with Poe, with Poe learning the, the, about the nature of war and how, oh. and you know, how war, how war and conflict, it's bad. Because Poe, because Poe is the guy who flies by the seat of his pants and he, and he mm-hmm. like enjoys what he does. He yeah, enjoys being yeah. a rebellion general. And then, and I mean, and it seems in the way that he's established, he doesn't seem like he cares. He he doesn't really like. It doesn't bother him. Like he just he looks as this like these are the good guys. These are the bad guys. And anything in the way of us is is just in our way. Yeah. And he and and I feel like he's the one who needs to learn that war is not something to enjoy. It's something that you just want to get over with or not go through at all because it's so tragic. And, and I think, I think that whole casino planet, uh, what's it called? I, uh, can't beats me, man. Uh, let me, let me, let let me, let me, I am the fact checker here. Um, bite, canto bite. Um, you really found it for me while she's stealing my job. I was kidding. Keep going. Oh shit. Sorry. (laughs) I'm just kidding, Um, man. (laughs) But yeah, canto bite that whole that whole side quest, I didn't like the. F- I think that Poe Dameron should have been on that side quest because he learns about the nature of war and like war profiteering and all that stuff. Just that whole part, like educating him, making him a better person. Let me, and yeah. and that ending bit, you can talk about the ending of that that <laughs> ending where Pin where Finn where Finn is like that whole part because oh. that because that just makes me angry. Well, you mean the ending where it's like the kids staring out into the fucking sunset? Or oh no, 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 not that. I'm talking about Finn's like final arc in the movie. Oh, in the Rise you know? of Skywalker. Yeah. No, 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 no. Oh His, my god. Okay. Um, no, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, you I'm can just... talk about this. I'm. I realize I've been the one really like. I've been like talking. No, no. On, keep on, dri- on, keep on. driving this. I'm more of the interviewer on this thing anyway. So if, if you, as long as you want to talk, you can talk. 
But I'm, no, I'm no, no, no. You you say something about it because I because I just I it's could like, talk for but the hours. Thing, about the thing it. is, with the Last Jedi, it's just it doesn't feel like a a sequel to the Force Awakens. It feels like a a three like the three storylines that are in there feels like three separate spin offs from the movie. Like it, like the movie didn't feel coherent. It just kept going from this very like weird planet Canto bite to the whole thing with Snoke and it just kept taking away from the gravity of each situation. I don't know. Yeah, I could completely see that. Also, like, how, what, how did you feel, and this is like a really controversial topic, but how did you feel the character Rose was handled? Uh, she got, she, I think, I think she really got a raw deal. She, she just, I think the reason the reason I really don't like her, I mean, I think she's a fine character. She, she you know, she does she she's there to teach like the nature of war and like how how war affects people. Mm-hmm. And I guess how she's trying to avenge her sister. I mean, that's that's a fun that's a nice that's a nice um, It's a storyline and it should work. It's a nice paper. it's a nice it's a nice storyline. Exactly. The only reason it doesn't work is because is the ending bit with Finn. That whole relationship I saw was completely pointless. I didn't buy it. Like, I, like I even even if it was like there, I just don't buy it. The, the the one thing that I really really don't like about her, and I guess this is down to the writing because I mean it really doesn't make sense. Um, the part where Finn is about to sacrifice himself that character moment oh oh where he's about to drop this is what i was asking you to talk yeah, about now right now i know i days. oh god i mean it's oh like, my god that whole part where that was a character moment where finn realizes he has accepted that he is fighting for the right side and he has a chance the rebel alliance is has their tails between their legs and they are running and they are either going to run or die. And I mean, and even if they do run, they might actually die because they have this <laughs> giant laser that can break the door down in an instant. Yeah. And, and that moment where he says, he's basically saying like, as sick as it is, I, I have something to live for, to fight for and finally die for. And that's just something, and that was such a moment that I think was so, so screwed up. It wasn't even screwed up. I it just it made it made me angry, and not a lot of movies just, make me angry. And just and that whole character moment, I think that that moment that the stormtrooper defector sacrifices his slash the defector saves that sacrifices their life to save the people that they chose to fight for Mm -hmm. that is such a that would have completed his character arc that would have that would have put it into a nice little bow like that was wonderful I think that 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 was such a wonderful opportunity that would have probably made up for the rest of that like for the rest of that so so yet angering movie that really would have been a pivotal moment that i think i think that they should have killed him off that that would have that made would have, that, that would have, would have made would have really yeah that would have made his character a martyr and having that last third be like be appreciating his sacrifice and like saluting him and like making him a revered character. Just mm. sorry, I needed a drink. Um, yeah. Just that whole that that would have cemented it as like one of the best moments in Star Wars. But then Rose Tico comes out of nowhere, <laughs> saves his life, puts the resistance at risk of, of dying, and then she says, and then she says, not fighting what we hate. But saving what we love, and then the then the laser is shot into the door to kill every single person that they love. 
it's just so <laughs> ass backwards. Like, if you think it about makes... it, though, if they had killed him off, then that would just pro- like, what if that had been like sent out to the stormtroopers and more stormtroopers would follow in his shadow and then he'd be this big public figure. And it's like, we're all doing this for, f- we're doing all this for Finn then. But then, exactly. What, what, exactly. Like, what are they, uh, what are they fighting for? I just, that would have been a great, now that you mention all of this, if they had just killed him off then and then used him as a symbol in the rise of Skywalker, I feel like that would like have been that a could have been that could have been a pro- I guess I guess that could have been done in the world building that they show that the propaganda from a stormtrooper defector fighting against the people that you know that I mean he can't that like he realized, like he was, he's the. You have this character. He realizes the atrocities that the people he fights for mm-hmm. are are responsible the for. That he grew up in and then he, he says, and then he, exactly, and then he starts, and then he, then on his first mission, he realizes, oh my god, this is wrong, and then he finds something to fight for, and then he saves these people's lives, commits an act, like basically makes himself a martyr. And a hero to the Rebel Alliance. Exactly. Just, exactly. We should. We should have wrote these movies. God damn it, dude. We should have wrote the. We should have wrote the last like third of of um, of Rise of Sky, um, Last Jedi. Yeah. But but like seeing and that would have actually made that girl. What I think that I think that girl um, from uh, Rise of Skywalker. That's a defector as well. She was also a defector. Hmm. Um. Uh. Hold on. Rise of Skywalker. Let's just see this here. Uh. Ah, Naomi Aki's character. Oh, Naomi Aki. I could not remember her name, but I was, I was like, "Is it? Are you talking about yeah, Naomi Aki? Yeah, you are." Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she. I think her character, Jana, was a um, was a stormtrooper defector. The same, the same, the same as, uh, mm-hmm. you know, that's what, that's what I was thinking, um, that, I mean, that, that would have made that cameo and that appearance and her character make a lot more sense because she, like, affected, because, like, to have them call back, if she said that one of, I, I knew Finn, you, who you called Finn, um, I knew him, and to hear that he died made a lot of us defect and like want to fight for another side or just escape the war. Like, that's a real story of people that's joining, a compelling, joining a movement. Exactly. Joining a movement. That's a compelling story. But it was all rubber knocked up. I don't want to but, swear because this is a podcast. Yeah. But but I mean, the, it's, it's, yeah. The thing but like the thing is like I feel like the Rise of Skywalker did it's best because it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to follow up after a movie as lackluster as The Last Jedi, so they had to put all of these different storylines in. And there was so I don't know if you noticed, but there was so much happening in that movie in the Rise of Skywalker. Uh-huh. But they had to sort of yeah. shoehorn in. Like I wish we had gotten some mention of Palpatine or some mention of even Exegol because. In the first five minutes of the movie, you learn that there's just this completely new planet that's been dis like regarded the whole time. Also, also, yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing with these new the trilo- the the sequel trilogy is that like is the pacing is so all over the place. Like like with the like with 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 um uh Force Awakens, mm-hmm. the pacing is fine. Like I mean, it's it's kind of slow enough for the movie that it is. It's a slow movie. It's world building. We get we, yeah, exactly. And we, we have all the characters back. We've got um, we've got Han Solo back in a pretty, pretty big role. We like seeing him. So as long as he, we, he's on screen, us as the viewer are hooked, right? Yeah, that's why it worked. Mm-hmm. And in oh my lord, in Last Jedi, holy Christ! Let me just Google this. Last Jedi. Oh my lord. Three, it was two and a half out. Jesus fucking. I, at a certain point in the last Jedi. Cut, cut, wait, cut, cut that, cut that, I will, cut that. I will. Lead it out. I will. But um, at a certain yeah. point in the last Jedi, I think, at least in theaters, but I rewatched it fully, but I just checked out at a certain point in the movie. I was like, 
Oh my god! I think I maybe even fell asleep for like five minutes. So it was like the there's pace, <sighs> dude. Okay, Last Jedi. Last Jedi was like a really subpar movie. It's my worst. It's my pace, least favorite one. But the pacing. Oh my lord! Back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. Like, what's, and then, what's and the then, movie? and I mean, and each of those times, it was too long. It was. It was too long on each of those sides. It was on too. It was too long on plot A, plot B, and then, and like it's two full acts. It's like three full acts of that, and then there's a fourth act of a three act movie. What it is like, is it's three movie ideas meshed into one incoherent mess. That's what it is. And there, you've got your it, you've no, got your Finn storyline, your Ray storyline, and then you're like. Mentor, with you got your Ray Mentor oh. storyline, and then you've got um, the thing with oh, like Poe. Poe and, po and, and all that crap. Back and forth and back and forth, and then when they converge on um, uh, the ice, the the salt planet. Um, yeah, I don't care about names. The the salt planet. Yes, the it's, planet of salt. Yes, mm. it's just so. It's just like at that point, you are like worn out. Like I remember, like I remember mentally in the theater, I was so exhausted. Like I was just so, I was so done with the movie that I just could not wait for it to end. Like I mean, and that final act is fine. Like I mean, I like that battle. It's it's got engaging sequences, but it's just and it, at and that it, yeah. point, at that point, you're begging for the movie to end. Or like set something up for the next movie, but it doesn't do anything like that. Um, you're talk. I mean, actually, there is going to be another movie, but we can talk about that at the end. They've already greenlit that, so um. I'm sorry. What? They've greenlit the new Star Wars movie. Remember? Oh. Uh... But um, if you, I mean, we can we can, we can finish up with that because we're going just shy of one minute for one hour forty five. What we let's talk about Rise of Skywalker. Let's talk about Rise of Skywalker really quickly. What were your like thoughts about um, sort of the new all the new characters they introduced and sort of like the new characters? The new characters were just were I don't think they were really welcome additions. Mm -hmm. Like I thought, I thought Lando was just sort of tacked on there. Like that could have been that could have been anybody helping them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it could have been anyone, but I mean, but the fact that like the fact that Leia forgot to mention that he was there like that was just i i just that whole like sequence where he shoots that arrow mm -hmm. is just is just like that whole sequence is just to get an applause from the audience but i mean it's just i didn't i didn't like that part i thought it was just really really tacked on yeah. and i mean and and just oh my god and just one other thing i'll just talk about pacing the pacing is like it's breakneck speed. Because there's so many different things going on. It's breakneck speed. Like, you don't dwell on a character. Like, with The Last Jedi, you're, you dwell too long too on these slow. characters. You dwell too long on these characters in Last Jedi. And then in Rise of Skywalker, you're with them for, say, like, two exchanges of dialogue, maybe an action scene, and then you're immediately to the next scene. It's like, like, yeah. It's just it, like it. It's breakneck speed, and that's one other thing I just could not get past. Yeah, I, I is just, that it just the pacing in they, that movie is atrocious, but and it's because they had like so because that movie was so slow. I feel like some of the elements of this movie could have been put in the place of certain elements from the last movie. Like I felt like they exactly. brushed they brushed over some things. Like I, I. Did not buy having a whole Palpatine character arc in one movie. You can't do that without it feeling rushed, which is why this yeah. felt rushed. And well, and well, I felt like because you know, up, leading up to like the final two movies, everyone's like, "Who's Ray's parents? Ray doesn't know her parents. Who are her parents?" And then we get the answer, and I get the answer in the theater, and I'm like, I'm just so like unimpressed I'm, that's not even the right word for it i'm just so like no, that was a fan you know what that was 
that was a fan theory that probably I'm sure I'm sure that was a fan theory that you and I read yeah. after like after around the time of like Rise of Skywalker being announced. Yeah. Like that was like think when we were like you and I were like speculating what's the next Star Wars going to be called or something like that. And I mean it was just and I remember like that was probably one of the fan theories that you and I read. Yeah, it was definitely one. I'm remembering all this. It's so, like, it's so tacked on and lazy that it's just that she is a Palpatine, Palpatine's granddaughter, that, I mean, I just... Uh, I hate that. I, I, just, yeah, I hate that everything just ties into everything. I feel like if I were to rewrite the Rise of Skywalker, I would rewrite it that her parents were nobodies. I would just rewrite it as that exactly because that's exactly. what they set up in the I Last mean, Jedi. Is that as long as that you can find the Force within you, then they completely discard that in the next movie because exactly. it's like anyone like, can have the Force. Like, showing Ray when they're saying everybody can have the Force. In the next movie, five minutes in, I am the... I didn't even say it explicitly, but we kind of figured it out. I, I'm like, your father. It's like... It's just, it's just that you whole, get, I mean, that was just, a little jumbled, man, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. The, the whole part about her being a Palpatine makes the Force seem so... It makes it seem like a bloodline rather than, rather than something that you can, that you can train to to interact with to reach out and interact oh, with yeah it's just like she, like, like af- I mean, after after we figured that out she just didn't seem like the same character it's like oh she's a palpatine well then why like why like it just it didn't it, she didn't feel the same after like now i now i look at ray differently because she's a palpatine just sort of like okay. exactly like i mean it's just oh i remember i remember um for the viewers at home, this is just something that I, I remember, is that after after Rise of Skywalker came out, I remember when we were in the IB, when we were in the common room, <laughs> and I remember we I googled the plot because you had seen it, mm-hmm. and I said, and I just said to me, and I remember what I said. I said, "Are you are you kidding me?" Like I just it was. You no, know, so, you're like, are you are you kidding me? I said, "Are you kidding me?" Like this is. I laughed at this when when this came out. Like it was just it so like bad. Blatant, fan it was blatantly play it safe, but it didn't even play it safe because it was just such. It was schlock. Like what it, just it was. Did what it not. was was it was just like a, a, a cop out. It's like you want more references to the original movies. Oh, we'll give her a last name and we'll make her related to this character that we ha- didn't probably plan on even bringing in until after the Last Jedi did. Bad. Exactly. It was an like, out, It was an afterthought. It was like it was a panic decision because people were so angry about Last Jedi. I feel like The Last Jedi could be a respectable worst movie in like I feel like if they'd done The Rise of Skywalker a little bit better then I would appreciate some of the stuff that The Last Jedi set up a little bit more. Granted The Last Jedi had its problems, but it's just the mixture of the three movies doesn't feel like a coherent trilogy tri- trilogy at all. Trilogy. Like, yeah, 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 it's just it's it's people flying by the seat of their parents. Like at that point, three separate like movies. the problem was the problem was is that like you build something up and then someone else crashes it. You know, you, you where can you go? Where can you go? Like I mean, the only way to do is just to play it safe. But I mean, they didn't even do that. Like the movies are just set up after set up after set up. Oh, no, no, what they are I mean, actually is their good idea after good idea after good idea, but all of those good ideas have terrible execution. And I mean, I mean that in granted, like, terrible. I mean, granted, yeah, and that's the thing, and that's the thing with the original trilogy. Like, everyone says that, oh, the original trilogy wasn't like pre planned. Yeah, it wasn't. But it took a lot of skill to make it work. Like, I mean, it was a, they people, were space operas. They worked. They, they worked because. Even though they were outrageous, you could still feel heart. You could still, you could still, like relate with the character. There was, there was just something about them that people kept going on to, even though they were, even though they were so cheesy, right? Exactly. Like I mean, they're so campy. campy like and the I mean, perfect word. Yeah, exactly. Like it's just, it's so cheesy that I mean, you can't help but love it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like ugh. 
And the only thing that they have in common is the music, because John Williams is... I don't need to say anything John, about John, John Williams. John Williams is, he, is a legend. Because his music, because his, his orchestrating, his orchestra in that film, in all of these films, actually. I will like, say, yeah, the, the score is probably one of the best parts about these new films. Because, they like, really, all, they every really. Single, every single part it, where I, there was music playing, like, it really fit with the mood and the tone. It's um, either the, okay, if, if we had to agree on something, because I feel like we might need to wrap this up soon. Yeah. Um, if we can agree on something that's common with all of these movies that we both can appreciate and like respect is the visuals, the care, I get, maybe the characters and the music, because that's just never fail. Those are going to be excellent. The like they're always going to be quality. Here, here's what I'll, here's what I'll say. Like as a final point, the characters are good the writing for these characters is bad. Because if you look at each character on paper, there are, you could make probably like a, like a perf, almost perfect movie with the characters that you have. You have exactly. Ray, you have, like Finn, like you have all this foundation. It's just, it comes down to execution, man. And that's all I got to say about the. Uh, it, well, it disappoints me. It just disappoints me. It's disappointing. We can talk, we should talk about this more like another time. Yeah, um, this is, this is, by the way, guys, this is just a three-part thing we're trying out. Sometimes we'll just do one topic for a couple, because as you can probably see, we do not stop talking. So, um. Yeah, like, uh, I mean, yeah. I, I'm not even sure, like, like, even if, like, I mean, uh, editor's note, editor's note, mm -hmm. side thing. Mm -hmm. Just, even if this doesn't, like, even if it's not, like, a massive hit or people don't watch it. I'm, like, I mean, this is fun to do. I still want like, to do it, man. I don't do. care if people like isolation. I want to do it. Like, literally, okay, to, to the viewers at home, to the viewers at home, like, this is just something we're just doing, like, in our free time. So, so I mean, so, I mean, we just, I mean... Yeah. Like, I mean, we can, I mean, if in the comments, say what you want. We may we say can, stuff like, that you don't that. agree with. I mean, this is all, we're not trying to offend any movies or any, like, people who like these types of movies, but, um, we're, we're, just, just, we're, we're just, just, we're just talking, man. This is, this and is I mean, what we feel are. free And feel free to comment, like, say, say what you agree, if you disagree. I mean, any movies you want to talk, I also, want us also, to talk yeah. about it. Yeah, feel free if you if you have any movies that you think we may have already watched or you want us to watch and maybe sort of talk about or riff on. We'd be happy to take some, you know, take some suggestions because we're we're, mm. we're big moviegoers, so we'd love to. Absolutely, absolutely. And also, yeah. while we're this small, maybe if somebody wants to write in and maybe do a call with us, we'd be happy to sit with Yeah, them. yeah, absolutely. So, um... I might invite a friend on later on. Oh, some other yeah. Time. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty like I said, this is a pretty easygoing thing. There's no nothing to be. I mean, we we ba we basically prepared nothing but the topics we're going to talk about. So we're really just riffing yeah. over each other's points. Um, and hopefully, and hopefully, maybe we can start trying to live stream this, and maybe maybe if we get around oh, to that. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> so um, this is uh that I mean. This was our first sort of. Du du I'm going to restart that in a few seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that was our first iteration of our Isolation Nation podcast. If you have any queries, in inquiries, anything you want to talk to us about, um, just contact th me through the comments, and I'll get back to you. I always have my socials in the comments, so you can go ahead and contact me through there, um, and then I'll get in touch with Gabe if you need to get in touch with him as well. Um, so that's going to be, I'm going to sign off and Gabe. Yeah. Well, this was fun. So hopefully, hopefully we'll see you maybe in a, I don't know, a week, maybe two weeks. We can do this again. Yeah. So, uh, thank you to the 2000 viewers or 200 viewers who tuned in <laughs> after I pressured them to. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, and everyone also at this time, while everything's going on, I just want to tell everybody that just. Stay safe. Um, just uh, get get fresh air when you can, but just wear a mask at all times. Even if the rules are a little bit more lenient where you are, just keep in mind about the people that are around you that may be more affected. So if any if there's anything you get out of this, um, take take away take away that advice. I don't know. It depends on what you want to do. All right. <laughs> 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 oh,
see the thing? <laughs> no. No. No one can see oh the my, thing. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So um. Well, okay. Let's just let's just riff on outros for a few seconds. We're gonna try a few outros. So, oh my god. <laughs> thank you guys, and I'll see you next time on Isolation Nation. See you guys next week or month or whenever. When it hurts like this.